Okay, so today's lesson is all about um, adding and subtracting rational expressions and solving rational equations. So if we want to solve um, rational, or I'm sorry, if we want to add rational expressions, we are going to go ahead here and we're going to check out our denominators and we're going to see if they're the same. And if they're not the same, then we can't add them yet. And so I see that they are not the same. And when I'm comparing them, I always want it to be in as factored form as possible. So I'm going to pull out a 5 because that's what's going to help me easier. Um, sorry, that's what's going to help me see in a more easy way um, what they have in common. And then I like to share the, I like to highlight the common factors. So both of these have an n minus 1. And so really, the only thing I need is for this to be multiplied by 5. And if I multiply by 5 on the bottom, I am going to have a common denominator. But if I want to multiply by 5 on the bottom, I need to also multiply by 5 on the top. So that's going to give me 25 over 5 times n minus 1. And then we have 6 over 5 times n minus 1. And we're going to combine our like terms. And we always want to make sure our answer has the numerator and denominator as completely factored as possible before we say for sure it's our answer because sometimes this could simplify more. Now in this case, 31 doesn't have any common factors that we could pull out, it doesn't divide by five, um, and obviously there is no n minus one in the numerator, so this is as far as we can go, and this is our final answer. Okay, now we're gonna look at another example. This one is similar, um, however, I am going to start out by pulling out what they have in common is a 3 and that leaves us with 6n plus 5 and when I look at this to determine what they share in common I notice that they both have a 3 but that's all they have in common so in order for this for them to have a common denominator this one right here needs an n and this one right here needs a 6n plus 5. And so now we can see that the denominators are the same. Um, so now our job is to simplify. So that's 6n squared over 3n times 6n plus 5. And then here we're going to make sure we distribute. So that's 12n plus 10. And this will be still 3n times 6n plus 5. And so when I combine these, I now get a quadratic in my numerator, which is fine. But I should check and see if it will factor um, and if there's anything that they have in common. So I definitely see that I can pull out um, a 2 here and get... 3n squared plus 6n plus 5. And I might be able to factor that more, but I don't think I can. Um, 3n squared, I don't think that factors anymore. So that means this is our final answer. Okay, so let's say we have a complex fraction, and we know it's a complex fraction because we have fractions in fractions. And so our goal here is going to be to start out by combining the denominator. So I have 1 over x on the top, and I'm just going to leave that be. And I'm going to work on making the denominator fractions have, their, have a common denominator. So I have 3 over x squared. And I'm going to multiply that by 3 on the top and the bottom. And then with 1 third, I'm going to multiply by x squared on the top and the bottom so that I have a common denominator for the two of them. 
And so I'm going to work on simplifying that. And so my numerator just kind of stays with me. I'm not working with it right now. I just want to make sure I don't make any copy error errors while I'm working with it. Sorry about my dog in the background. I'm not sure if you can hear her whining uh, for the hundredth time to go out and play. Um, okay, and so now I have common denominators in the bottom of my bigger fraction. And so I can combine those. So it's going to say 9 plus x squared over 3x squared. And instead of dividing by this bottom fraction, I can now change this to be multiplying by the reciprocal of that fraction. So it looks like this. And so I have that factor right there. And what I see right now is that I'm going to have 3x squared over x times x squared plus 9. And I have something I can simplify. I have x times x, right, right here. And so one of those will cancel with this x and will leave me with just a single x in the numerator, <clears throat> like this. And my x squared plus 9 is already um, as simplified as it can get. It can't factor um, because it's x squared plus 9. Um, so it can't factor. We can't cancel anything else out. So it's as simplified as possible, and so this is our answer. So let's look at um, a problem where we're solving a rational equation. And so our goal here is to um, simplify and combine fractions that are on the same side so that we have a fraction equal to a fraction. We don't want multiple fractions being added and subtracted. We want to condense those as much as possible. Now, one option for us is to get a common denominator with the 3 and this 1 over a plus 4. However, an easier method might be to notice that a plus 4 and a plus 4, that these two fractions have a common denominator already. So if I can, um, if I notice that, I might say I'm going to subtract 1 over a plus 4 from both sides so that I don't have to do any um, getting of a common denominator. Then I will just have a common denominator as is. So now you guys can see that they already have a common denominator. So I can combine those fractions, and I'll get 2 over a plus 4. And so I'm going to multiply both sides by a plus 4. Some of you might consider this to be cross-multiplying because the negative 3 is really over 1, right? Um, and so we get negative 3 times a plus 4 equals 2. And we are going to simplify. And so we get 14. So I get negative 14 thirds. Now I do need to be careful and always check for extraneous solutions when I'm solving with rational equations because this, if I were to plug this back in and it were to create a zero denominator, then that solution wouldn't actually work. So every time I get a solution for this, I need to double check that it doesn't create a zero denominator in my original equation. But good news is negative 14 thirds won't create a zero denominator, so we don't have that as an extraneous solution. So that is our answer. And we just solved that equation. Now let's go ahead and look at another one. And I want to make sure that I solve this kind of using a different method. Um, although some of you might notice that like the last one, we have a same denominator on opposite sides of the equation. So one way to solve it might be to move this over to the other side. Um, but I'm going to do it a different way so you can see what a different way might look like and um, also see a couple of strategies in that situation. So in this one, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to multiply this um, in order to get a common denominator. So if I take this right here, I might see that if I pull out a V, I have a V plus 2 left. So my second fraction that has a V plus 2 
is almost ready to be combined with the first fraction, but it needs another V. So I'm going to multiply by V on the top and the bottom. So now I have V squared minus 5V plus 4 plus 3V, all divided by V times V plus 2 equals 4. And if I have V squared plus 2V over here, this is also uh, V times V plus 2. And I'm going to simplify, so I get V squared minus 2V plus 4 equals uh, 4, oh sorry, over V times V plus 2 equals 4 over V times V plus 2. So here's another trick, or not a trick, just something you should notice. If I were to want to cross multiply these and these, I definitely could. But, if I take an extra second to look at it, I might notice that they both have the same denominator. And so, really, that's an extra set of information that we don't need. We could say, I'm going to multiply both sides by V times V plus 2. And what's going to happen is that it cancels out the denominator on the left, and it cancels out the denominator on the right. So we're left with v squared minus 2v plus 4 equals 4. I'm going to subtract 4 from both sides. And I'm going to factor. And I'm going to solve. So I get v equals 0 and v equals 2. Um, now, I do need to double check that both of those work. And what I notice is, if I plug in 0 into this original equation, 0 squared plus 2 times 0, that gives me a 0. So that solution right there is extraneous, and it does not work. But 2 does work, so I can box that as my answer. Now, what would have happened, you might ask, if we cross-multiplied like this, instead of noticing that we could knock out those denominators? Well, it wouldn't be incorrect, but it would make our life much more complex because we'd have a quadratic times a quadratic. So we'd end up with quartics to be factoring, and that's going to be very messy. So we need to make sure that we're paying attention and noticing where we can simplify um, and do that as soon as possible rather than waiting. So hope that helps. Good luck studying. Bye.